Thank you for joining me in my story that I'm going to share so that it doesn't have to keep repeatedly happening again and again. It's about relationships and institutions, and I wanted to share my story by saying that we celebrate with flowers, cards, candy, especially when it's a time to celebrate, or in a lot of times when somebody's hurting and needs a friend. I do not celebrate when I talk about the things I'm going to talk about today. So I wanted to take you to this really pleasant place. A place that I would go to if I had the chance to right now. I just cannot go to this quiet babbling brook. But that's as close to what I enjoy living for the time that I was in recovery when I first started out in domestic violence recovery in 2010. And there have been a lot of places that here in Pennsylvania that are full of institutions that don't provide a natural escape that I had in Missouri. And I don't envy anybody here in Pennsylvania at all. Because most of the same thing happens to everybody. They're all either in institutions or rehabs to some degree. When I left for Missouri, I got a chance to experience what a natural escape felt like. I left behind the institutions of Pennsylvania. It seemed like everybody I knew was either in rehab or in some institution or still drinking alcohol or abusing drugs. So by the time I got into recovery, I got to enjoy the, the recovery of being in group and therapy, and domestic violence therapy. Um, I had just recovered from severe abuse in my marriage. So this may be broken up in two parts because I don't know if I'll be able to fill up this whole thing. Um, without having to do two parts to this story. So when it gets cut off, I will try to do my best to follow it up uh, at another point. I want to tell you the most important part of the story so that I don't have to do a second. No one should have to go back to abuse. You should open up and talk about it. You should go to counseling and group and support um, the way it's intended. No, I'm not talking about rehabs. I'm not talking about institutions. I'm talking about support group. Because by opening up about abuse, it puts at least, connects you with other people. Like I'm not trying to make money. I'm not trying to do anything. I'm just telling you who I am as a person. And one of the things is I have to make a living. Like I, one of the things about abuse is not being able to have the ability to make a living. And when the abuse got really bad at home, I created the Court of Public Opinion, the field report. And I created it with the, as an engine to make a living. And leaving abuse and then coming back to get the surgery that I needed because I had other things that happened after my first assault. Because I was assaulted the same day I was uh, in surgery. I, I've had, it comes with tremendous pain to get into domestic violence surgery. And then to have somebody repeatedly abuse it, abuse me, and abuse the relationship with me. So I don't know what happens to those people. I don't know what happens to our relationship because I, I don't think it's going to improve. And nor do I have to worry about what happens in the outcome of it. There's a lot of insensitive comments that were made to me today by the same person. And when I had gone to the domestic violence shelter, I reached out for help. A girl physically assaulted me there. And I'm upset. 
I am not allowed to raise money because of my social security. I'm not allowed to do a lot of things. I have so many limitations put on me. And I have been through a lot of abuse. I have a tooth that was knocked loose. And I was on Facebook. When right after it happened. And I had been really broken by this experience. This is all wow. I'm dealing with a predatory towing matter. I ran out of gas and I had trusted a lot of people. Not because I ha wanted to, because I had I had to believe that in all this that it would work out. Because I didn't trust anybody and I had no reason to trust anyone. I had been a battered wife. I had been battered by my husband pretty bad. I don't have to believe in anything anybody says or does. I don't have to give anyone that kind of space in my life. It was already bad enough to live in my household as it was. It was bad enough to grow up without a mother, without the loving consideration, care, and compassion a young woman needs. I had been through an abusive, abusive home. So when I turn to my YouTube page, I want to be able to blog. I want to be appreciated mostly though. And I don't expect my YouTube subscribers to get it. I mean, you're here to watch videos. And I'm supposed to be a content creator. But I want, to, I want you to know more about me. I'm a domestic violence survivor. And I'm trying to create content. And I wanted you to know more about what I went through. So that there was no mystery here. I created the Court of Public Opinion during the time of my domestic violence at home. And I was wondering how would I be able to make a living doing this. I just figured I'm going to just do the best I can. And the person that was helping me actually started helping me again. And this all happened just recently. Because they kind of, you know how relationships fade off for a while. And I, you can see us now at uh, militaryvideos.com, the slash the field report. And we'll, we'll get back to YouTube. We're, we're taking some off time. We're off air for good reason. I, I want you to know who I am. Before you ever click like or share or anything, I want you to know who I am. And what kind of content I'm trying to create. And and, and that that's to be decided on soon because there's still some things I want to work on. Right now it's just about me talking to you about what I went through to get into counseling and therapy for domestic violence. There was no gun put to my head, though. Everything I am telling you is so that it doesn't happen again. Because there's institutions in Pennsylvania that would rather put put people on medication and pills and call them crazy. And, and, and that's one of the things about uh, domestic violence. If you know anything about the power control world, there's a lot of comments made like that. If you are in a relationship with somebody who doesn't respect you, you could probably find that person in the power control wheel, I'm pretty sure. It's, a, it's kind of a guideline to tell you what is good for you and what's not. I'm not here to tell you who is in that power control wheel, but if you've ever been abused... And you need someone to talk to, reach out to, go to the comment section and say something to me. I have been through it. All I can tell you is I, I don't have any magic words for it. I just learned to open up about it. It grieves me because it took me a long time to tell you this story I'm telling you. It all started in 2007 and eight and... 
it really got bad 2009 and into 2010. I finally left. And it seemed to all surface again here because it's family. And stealing off of somebody who's survived abuse or hitting somebody who's already been a survivor of abuse. I know that the groups I've gone to, the group counseling, that most survivors of abuse don't want to be abused again. And I, they find out that abusers come in every age, socioeconomic, race, creed, color. And, of course, sex, that would be. I just want you to know that abuse is unacceptable. Hurting and hitting somebody is unacceptable. It is unacceptable to pinch, to bite, or any of that. And that's what most abuse gets into. It gets into the real terrible, terrible way of life. Which everybody that gets involved in abuse of any kind needs to be in counseling. I just want to end this blog by saying this, that this off time gives us a little time to recuperate and think about what we want from this channel and what we want to try to create as far as content. It's still helpful to know, though, I'm a survivor of domestic violence and I will be celebrating the 14th year at the Court of Public Opinion and the Field Report. That's how long ago the abuse had started. That's because I created this blog 14 years ago on BTR. And I'm filled with emotions when I think about what I created because I was going through a crazy, crazy ordeal. And still am. <laughs> But I'm going to tell you the institutions and the things that go on is really the way it's been handled here in Pennsylvania. It really, it requires recovery and natural escapes. And I encourage you, if you need to reach out for domestic violence recovery and help, call that 1-800-SAFE-LINE. Thank you for listening.